In this video, we're gonna, going to get a tour of JoomDev's Asteroid Framework for Joomla. Hey there, Joomla fans. Tim Davis here. I'm a Joomla fan too. And thanks for tuning in to today's Watch Me Work live stream. This is Watch Me Work live stream number 14 here on twitch.tv forward slash basic Joomla. If you're watching this on the replay on YouTube, on the YouTube channel, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so and ring the bell to get notifications of new live streams and tutorials. I want to welcome the latest subscriber, Rocky Mountain Waterproofing. Just signed up just before going live. Uh, the other thing that uh, I want to uh, point out too, and I don't have that page up just right now, uh, but uh, head on over to the basicjoomla.com site and click on giveaways and you can enter in the monthly giveaway, which has a one month membership to manage unlimited sites on myjoomla.com or one year membership to manage one site. Uh, uh, any regular labs pro version of any regular labs extension, uh, use of that for a year. And then also from Joomla Shack, uh, the book, oh, I got it right down here. Joomla 3 explained from uh, Joomla Shack. So, you can enter to, oh, you can't see that on the screen right here. So let me just move that over. Uh, anyways, basicjuma.com forward slash giveaways. There's what the book looks like. So you can get it, enter in that. And also starting in December, we're gonna have another prize added to the monthly giveaway and it's going to be from JoomDev. And we'll talk about that as the stream gets going. And so uh, Chayton is here from JoomDev. I think I heard you just come on right now, right? Yep. All right, welcome, Chayden, uh, Chayden Madan. And uh, so, Chayden, tell us a little bit about yourself before we get going on this. Oh, I, you know, personally, I started working on Joomla. This was back in, you know, 2008, nine. you know. It used to be Joomla 1.0, 1.5 back then. And I was freelancing for almost, you know, five, six years before we officially started doing uh, templates, small plugins, modules, or, you know, decided to go into this direction. And that's, that's pretty much about it. Yeah. Okay. So how old of a company is JoomDev? Oh, so the, or the company was registered back in 2009, you know, I got the, you know, bank account and everything set up back then, the domain name and everything. But again, you know, uh, as far as the product side of the business goes, you know, creating templates, extensions, all of this, uh, started really, you know, you can say early 2015 or late 2014, you know. Okay. And uh, so how many people work at JoomDev? Uh, currently, we have a staff of about 10 plus people who are dedicated to, you know, obviously serving the clients that we have and putting out new extensions, templates and plugins that, you know, will be part of the discussion today. Okay. So it's just after 11 o'clock in the morning here on the left coast of Canada. And that mm -hmm. makes it two o'clock in New York, which is not that's where you live, but that's the time zone you live in or work in, that's right? That's the time zone I work by. Yeah, majority of the client base I've acquired over the years is from East Coast itself. You know, okay. I used to have a partner back in New York who, would, uh, you know, so who would help me, you know, work on these things. So that's why pretty much all the client base is from there, and you know, I'm available at this time. So what time is it there for you? In India, it's twelve thirty in the midnight. Twelve thirty seven to be exact. Yeah. All right. So this is uh, so. Uh, how how is Wednesday looking so far? <laughs> so far, so good. Yeah. So far, so good. Great. Uh, okay. Well, uh, go ahead and uh, share your screen and uh, tell us and uh, show us Asteroid Framework. And uh, remember, for those of you just tuning in, if you want to ask a question, uh, if you're doing it live here on Twitch, you need to follow the channel. And there's a ten minute delay before you're allowed to post. And uh, also, um, uh, yeah, so post your questions in there and we'll get to them and we'll put the Zoom link up later on. Okay, take her away. Can you see my screen? I can see it and I think everybody uh, can see it, yeah. Oh, perfect, okay. So the, you know, I did another, I, I guess it wasn't really a video stream, but it was, it was more of a, you know, interview with this, guy from australia you know he wanted to do something similar and you know the very first questions he asked was uh why asteroid you know i think i'd, I'd like to get started with that you sure. know, why do you want framework uh they're, they're good frameworks out there you know gantry i personally have used it for a number of years i think it's a very solid and very good framework 
and then we have you know t3 by Junmart. i think that's that's a really good framework too and then there are other players in the market too but really uh the reason we decided to do our own framework rather than using some uh you know something else was everyone was following uh you know a particular agenda or maybe scratching their own itch and none of these frameworks were really getting us what we wanted you know so uh, gantry was great with all the you know let's say the gantry 5 was great with everything but it didn't have all the customizations and everything we needed and you know it has kind of a page builder thing you know you can do slideshows custom html everything in the template itself and t3 had its own limitations so that was one of the reasons we decided to do our own framework if you go back and look you know you have we have a few templates which are still on t3 or gantry which are still running to this day almost like two years old templates and they have good user base you know twenty thousand downloads or so but really the idea was to offer the features that a we wanted and b our users wanted so badly cool mm-hmm Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll give really just uh, a basic overview of what Asteroid is and, you know, what it offers as far as, uh, you know, the basics are concerned. So uh, I'll, I'll start with the basics. You know, you can have a custom preloader. You can change the color of the preloader to whatever you like. You can change the background. You can, you know, change the size of the preloader. This is really just a CSS animation that is here. Okay. Uh, and can, that's the, uh, so that's the image that displays while the page is loading. Right. Uh, let's go ahead and configure one. So which one do you want? Oh, uh, uh, let's go with the uh, fourth one, the dot there. Yep. Okay. So we'll make it orange. Uh, you know, orange. Okay. <laughs> well, you're the man. Whatever you say, got it. Got it. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, orange. There yeah. you go. Okay. Make it big so it, it looks. And uh, let's save this. And the you know we're using RGBA colors, and I'll give you a good demo of what that is. You know. As, I will have a look at that. The page loads really fast, so you might not yeah, see it. Yeah, no, we saw it just there quick. Yeah. So the good thing about RGBA colors is we can actually, uh, you know, so in the background, the background is white, you can see, you yeah. know, while the page is loading, the background is white. We can actually change the opacity of this. So I can say, like, I want, you know, 0, 0200 or whatever. So you'll see the page will be visible even though there's a background up top. So let me refresh this real quick. It's, it's, there you go oh, there you go yeah right yeah. so and if i increase the opacity a bit you know like you know 600 or something so that's like 60 percent uh do that there you go okay. so that kind of gives the user a very uh good control of how to lay it out okay mm-hmm so that's number one. That's the first thing you know you do when you want. Uh, if you don't want the preloader, you can just disable it. Some some people just find it frustrating because you know, the whole page is inaccessible while it's loading. Yeah. So you can just disable it and not have to worry about it. Uh, the second is the back to top. You know, so when you scroll down a bit and you have the back to top. And again, this is something we thought a lot about and did it uh, after a, a lot of testing and stuff. And I'll give you a few uh, good uh, demo of what this does. Uh, so these are all the, you know, the arrow icons that are found in the Font Awesome library. So all of them, you can select from any of them, and that icon would display. You can select the size of the icon, which is something really good. So you can, you know, go with the standard 20 pixels, which is default. But if you want to go bigger, like, you know, someone wants like 80 pixel icon or whatever, you can do that. You can change the color of the icon, the background color, the same as a preloader, you know. So let's say on the icon to be orange and the background to be uh, you know, white or, you know, let's do green. That's a good contrast, sure, yeah. I think, right there. <laughs> yeah. And then you can select if you want the icon to be circle or rounded or a square, you know, a uh, different between rounded and circle is rounded would have like, you know, border radius. So it would have rounded corners and circle is like a whole, you know, 360 degree circle. So it would go rounded and just show you. This looks like now this is font awesome five, right? Did I see that when you're, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah, that's great. Uh, one of our uh, regular viewers, Vinny, really likes, uh, I think he uh, was one of the um, 
Kickstarters or some some contributor in that way to Fond Awesome Five, and he misses them in in Rocket Theme. They don't have that yet. Right. Got it. Got it. Yeah, this is Fond Awesome Five. Yeah. So one of the features of the back to top, uh, you know, functionality is now that we have this bigger icon, you know, which on my screen doesn't look that big. You know, if I you know had like a high, you know, really big background images and stuff, this yeah. is good. But when I go on a phone, you'll see it really takes up part of the screen. Right. So sometimes, even though it's useful, you know, you have the screen vertically and you want to just click and scroll, go all the way to the top, even though it's very useful on phone. But sometimes you don't want to have it over the, on the phone just because it's taking over space. So we have this option where you can turn it on off on phone, oh, nice. but still have it on desktop. This is something our users found, you know, very useful. They very much appreciated this option. Like again, you know, this is very, now if I go, you'll see, I don't see it on mobile any uh, anymore, you know. Yeah. But if I go back to the desktop version, you know, it's right there. Nice, and when that and that's a nice easy control for just turning it on and off. You're not going yep, in and yep, doing yep. code just, or putting just, in something, yeah. Just a button, just a button, yeah. So another feature that a lot of reach users have requested is having a custom uh, option here. So oh. instead of just these font awesome icons, you could, uh, if, what if you could put any font awesome icon or, uh, uh, or, or, or something like that, yeah. you know? So users have requested that and, you know, not a lot of them, but that may be something that's coming up in the line. Okay, so you have you have some basic icons there, but you may put it in. Yeah, so. these are all the up arrow or up, you know back to top relative icons in Font Awesome Library. You know, so this is the cloud upload, whatever. But other than that, nothing really suggests going back up. Yeah, at least in the free ones, not so. Okay. Yeah. And then we have the layout setting. This is something really simple. If you want to, let's say, go with a box layout. So, you know, by, uh, you know, by default, you obviously have the grid layout where the background colors and everything goes edge to edge. Uh, let's say if we just go ahead and upload a really good image. And that one we do. And I say, uh, no repeat, cover. And, you know, you can create the parallax effect right here by just selecting the correct background options okay. and stuff. And you can change that. Can you upload your own image? Oh, yeah, that's what I did. So okay. uh, when you click change image, this is a media manager. It's a simple oh, okay. media manager we created just for Asteroid. So you can click upload and then select whatever you want. And then obviously go new folder, whatever. You know, just this obviously saves it in the images folder of your root, you know, of your Joomla site. Yeah. But lets you manage everything. Here. Okay. So you have access to anything you already have on there anyways. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so we have this image, we're gonna save it. The cache, and there we have the notification. I'm gonna refresh this. Now, since the image is very big, you yeah, can see, yeah, you know, yeah. took, uh, up, we were able to see the preloader. Now you can see the background image is there. This is a boxed layout, you know, and really that's that's pretty much all it does. And it's a, you know, the image is fixed. So using these background options, you can see if you did scroll or whatever. These are really just basic CSS background options that you okay. have. Nice. Uh -huh. We'll go, go back and switch the white layout. Uh, the second option is the header, how you want your header to work. And I think before explaining the header, you know, just really this module, I'll explain this module position feature, how this works. Now, all the features in Asteroid, whether that be header or social icons, or, you know, we have the branding, we have the contact information, all of those are published to a module position that must exist in your layout manager. So for instance, header, you can see, is published to the position Asteroid header. And if I go to the layout manager, I can see I have Asteroid header selected here. Even though it's a module position, it's not linked to the core module manager anyway. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so, that, so you've got your own module positions that are... Um... Oh, these are the same module positions that come from the module manager. You okay. Know? So the positions are the same, but we just use the same uh, concept. So you, we don't, you don't actually have to add a header or you don't have to add a social or other elements okay. in the layout manager. You know? okay. So the layout manager is limited to four things, a header, 
uh, the default component and message, you know, so now three and fourth is the banner. And I'll explain what the banner does, you know, and it allows you to uh, display a background image and a heading at the top of the page. But really, that's the four things you can add in the layout manager. Okay. Mm -hmm. So going back to header, you know, the header is really customizable as far as the layout is concerned. So if you just focus on this area right here, these are the six uh, things that you, these are the kind of the layout you'll get. So right now we're looking at the horizontal layout. So in the horizontal layout, this is the logo, this is the menu, and this one number one is the block. Now a block can be either custom HTML or a module position. Let me give you an example of that real quick. So I go to the horizontal layout and I select left, you know, this one, yep. and in the header block, I select uh, custom HTML, okay? I demo with Tim and I save this. Okay. And I come back here and refresh. And you'll see the way it works is we have the logo here. Okay. Yep. So this is our header. We have a logo. We have the menu, which is left aligned to the logo, just like our image. And to the right, we have the text, the custom HTML that we added. Okay. Makes sense? Cool. Yeah. Okay. The second position is obviously the center position where the menu is not left aligned and center aligned. Okay. And the third one in the horizontal is actually where you have the menu right aligned to the right position. I'll go ahead and do that too. So uh, up where you have live demo with Tim, that could be an image or any HTML or anything. That could be that could be anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could be anything. So let's say if open if I copy this image, this can just be a, now again. I'm putting the custom HTML right here, but this can also be a module position. Okay. So let's let me uh, let's take it a step further. Let's say we want these social icons, these social icons appearing here in the menu bar, because, you know, in some templates, you have the search in the menu and stuff like that. Yeah. So we can do that too. So let's say I do a module position and I say, I go back to social and I see my social icons are published to top bar two position. Okay. I can go back to header and then here I can select top bar two. All right. And I'll save it. And again, this is also linked to the Core Joomla man module manager. So anything you publish from there would also appear here. So you can see our social icons okay. appear here. Now, if you, is that is that a fixed width that spot? Yeah. So we're we're using as much as we can with Flex and Bootstrap. Okay. So if it increases and if there's more space to the left, it'll take up that space before going two lines. Okay. All right. So it would push mm -hmm. the menu over a bit and. Yeah, okay. yeah. And, uh, all the way it can before going st start going to two okay. lines. Yeah, the priority is keeping menu in one line, so yeah. that's yeah. how it works. Yeah, although yeah. I've had some clients that didn't mind if it went to two lines and asked for that, and I, you know, I kind of scratched my head, but I gave it to them. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's just you know preferences. Yeah. All, all people have different. Yeah, so uh, that's the horizontal layout. Then we have the stacked layout. The stack layout is really, uh, you know, where you have the logo stacked on top of menu. Logo is like sitting on top of menu. So let me give you a demo of the first one. I'll change this to blank. There you go. So there you go. You know, some people like this layout if you want to have the logo in the center and then menu below. Okay. Now, in this one, you have a block at the bottom. So, you know, you can select, uh, let's say, I can select module position, and then I can select obviously top bar two. And just like the image, you know, we see here, the block would appear just below the menu. If I refresh, you can see the block is okay, there. Okay, nice. Yeah. So the other two blocks, the separated one, what it does is it separates, the evenly separates the menu item to the left and right. And let's say you have seven, then you can select the odd number of menu, the extra menu item you want to display it on the left or the right. And then obviously this one comes with two blocks. So I'll select another one here, module position, top bar two. And obviously sometimes these settings can be overwhelming for some users. Well, I just gonna say much. one of the things that I like so far is we're just going down picking options and we're not looking at something that's very you know this is very easy you can focus on one thing at a time there's lots but someone 
uh, maybe who's working on their own website and uh, is just learning to do websites or has this template, they're going to be able to say, oh, okay, I see what this does and then move on to the next thing they want to sort out. Sure, sure, sure. I agree. Yeah. But again, you know, I thought you might agree. Are... I thought you might agree. <laughs> <laughs> sure, but but you know, from the feedback we've had, some users even just these options, some users find even these uh, you know, overwhelming. Like there are too many options to configure the header. Why yeah. is it just not limited to the logo and the menu? You well, know? Send so, the, send them my information, they can pay me to do a website <laughs> for them then. <laughs> sure. So uh, this is a stack separated layout. Okay. Like I explained, you know, we have block at the top and the block at the bottom, logo in the center and menu evenly separated on left and right. And this is what it looks like. So this is the position, you know, you have the menu items on the left and right. Okay. And then obviously the social icons, which is a module position at the top, the logo in the center and the contact information, which is another module position at the bottom. And obviously, you don't actually have to keep these. You can hide these if you want. If you only want the, if you only want the, you know, just the logo. Let me blank this one second. There you go. And blank. If you just want the logo and the menu, no extra stuff there. You can do that too. So how did you get? How do you get the menu to split across too with the image in the middle? Is that's? Oh, we coded it. Well, I guess you did. That's pretty. That's a pretty cool idea, right there. When you when uh, when you showed that, I thought, wow, that's. Yeah, I'll tell you. The credit goes to actually Rocket Team. There was this Rocket Team template a client of mine was using, and it was using this layout uh, where the logo is in the center. I think the template is from back like 2015 or something. You okay. know, so the logo is in the center, and the menus are evenly divided on left and right. And while we were creating a, a Asteroid. So we were testing it against everything. You know, the first thing we were doing was testing it against all our clients' websites to see, are we able to do this layout? Are we able to do that yeah. layout? And an idea came to mind, what if we want to do that layout? What if we wanted to use Asteroid for this particular website? We couldn't because, you know, it's not possible. Yeah. So that's why we did the header in such a you know, manner so that you are able to do everything you want. You know, you're able to uh, pretty much move it around any way you want, okay. you know? Yeah. And obviously in the stack, I selected the last position, you know, last layout, which is stack divided. So you have logo and, you know, men, a logo and menu on the left sitting on top of each other and two module positions on the right. So, uh, you know, right now I don't have published anything. If I do publish, they're gonna appear here. Uh, they're gonna appear pretty much here, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the next is uh, the menu in the mobile menu. So you can select what menu you want to have yeah. here. By default, obviously, it's the main menu. So let's say if I change this to about a second. OK, so menu change. This menu yeah. would change. Yeah. And second is the mobile menu. Now, now, this was another one of those you know, scratching our own edge kind of things. So what happens in this one is we sometimes we had this, you know, we would create a mega menu for our clients and everything yeah. on a website. So it's big. But on mobile, we didn't need it, that mega menu. We just needed something really simple. Yeah. So that's why we created this option where on mobile, what would happen is you can select what menu you want. You know, it can be uh, where's mobile? I can't, there you go. Yeah. It can be a totally different menu item from what you see on desktop. OK. Yeah. So that's it. And other than that, you can select a logo here. So, you know, you can obviously use a text logo. Uh, it doesn't offer any styling as far as the text size and all is concerned. It's hard coded and default. The colors, if you want to modify this, you know, you just have to write a line or two of CSS. And if you select an image logo, you can select a logo for, uh, you know, desktop and a logo for mobile. You could also use a regular labs re-replacer in that to format the text. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I, you know, I was watching your Twitch radio before this, you know, and I'm a fan of uh, regular lab yeah. stations, you know, I, uh, I use pretty much all, you know, the advanced module manager, yeah. and the re replacer, db replacer, IP login, I, I'm a fan of, yeah, yeah. you know, they, they're really well coded and really thoroughly thought out extensions. Yeah. yeah. So uh, there's the logo and uh, the sticky header you know so this is another feature so when you scroll down the sticky header is here 
And again, uh, well thought out. Obviously, you can have a different logo for sticky header if you like. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. If so, by default, if you oh. don't select anything, it'll just inherit the you know the desktop logo, the default logo. But if you do change it, so that goes for mobile logo as well. So if you don't select the mobile logo and header logo, sticky header logo, yeah. it's gonna inherit the default uh, okay. logo you have. But if you select one, it display that specific one. Oh, I like that because if you have a really tall logo. And uh, you don't want that occupying the sticky, uh, like the sticky header, because it would still take up too much space. You can just have a nice smaller one or something that's, yeah. Right. Cool. Mm -hmm. And about taking up space, so, you know, just like the back to top op option we discussed a few minutes ago, for sticky header, we discussed something better too, which is um, you want to have the sticky header, but sometimes on mobile, it just takes too much space yeah so we thought uh, this out like you can have a sticky header or obviously decide if it's sticky on scroll up you know on desktop so right now we have it sticky but on some sites you know you see right when you're about to scroll back up the header would appear yeah. so you obviously have that functionality but you can actually decide if you want the header to be sticky on tablets or mobile so I can say I don't want it on mobile and tablet but I want it sticky on desktop so I can totally do that I mean show you how that works so I refresh so on desktop we'll have sticky on scroll up so it'll only appear so you'll see I'm scrolling down you yeah. can see it right when I'm about to scroll back up we start seeing it again okay. scrolling down don't see it right when I'm about to scroll up we start seeing it but on mobile we don't need it because we decided I mean just I guess I have to refresh on mobile we won't have it not on scroll up not on uh, you know not in general so we don't have sticky header just because sometimes it just takes too much space. Sure. Mm -hmm. And you already have a small header in mobile anyways, for the most part. Right, right. And if you do want to enable the sticky header, you can do it. So you can say sticky on scroll up or just sticky, you know, based on how you want it. And it would appear uh, right when you're about to scroll up, you know, for the current, uh, current selection. So let me show you that. And if I scroll back up, so right when I'm scroll about to scroll back up, you yeah. see the header right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that's the sticky header, and uh, there's uh, so the next option is the off canvas menu. So you can see, you know, this icon. Uh, you know, and while I was you know telling about the header, yeah. I thought you might ask about this icon because we didn't select it in anywhere, but it's still appearing. So let me go back and switch just to the regular layout, which works very well here. And refresh this real quick. So the way this works is this is the off canvas menu. You know, this is actually a position, a minor Oh, okay. Position. Off to the left there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And you can actually select from the animations here. So you can say, uh, first of all, when, when you want the off canvas to be visible, whether you want it visible on mobile or desktop or always. And these are the bootstrap default breakpoints. So you can decide where you want it visible. Okay. Okay. And secondly, you can decide how wide this is going to be. So let's say I'm going to select this is going to be, you know, 500 pixels yeah. wide. And not 5,000. Yeah, 5,000. <laughs> yeah, just take up the whole screen. Yeah. So uh, you can see this is 500 okay. pixels wide. Okay. And then I can select uh, what is it that uh, the animation will be. So this is the push effect where it's kind of pushing it to the left. You know, I can say slide on top where it keep the page in the background and slide really kind of on top of it what it reads. And there you go. So it slides on top, doesn't push the page in the back. And again, this is a module position. This isn't really a menu, you know. Okay. So we have the menu published here, you know, the mode menu yeah. of Joomla. You have that published here. You could uh, possibly publish anything, you know, any module, login or whatever, and then it would work just fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you could have a, a, a login link that opens up. Anything. Anything, anything. As long as it's a module, you can publish to the off canvas position and, and it would work. Okay. Mm -hmm. And obviously you can, uh, you know, so th uh, this setting is down here. This is the animation for the drop down menu, you know. Okay. Uh, and you can select if, if you want a fade animation or a slide. And, you know, these are some easing effects, which oh my uh, works. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 
<laughs> wow. So we can select, uh, let me see. So ease out. Let's select that one. And we can obviously just select the animation speed as well. Okay. So let's do that. All right. So you'll see, you know, this opens up really quick. You know, slides, obviously. If I do the fade animation and That's do true. ease out bounds, I just increase the animation time just yeah. so you can actually, uh, we can actually see it animating. And then at the moment, it's pretty fast. Refresh. So you can see, you know, it kind of bounces in. Yeah. And that's the default animation for that function. And that's, that's, that's how it works. Yeah. So, cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And next up is the colors section where you can, you know, change any color you like, you know. So the first are the body colors, you know, you can change the background color, the default text color, the link color, the link hover color. And these are really the bootstrap uh, SAS colors that come in, you know, these are really just overriding those variables. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the, you know, the header color. So you can say a background for the header a text color, logo text color, logo tagline color. Oh, actually we can change it here, but we can't change the uh, size of the logo uh, text and no. tagline. That's not possible. You can change the color here. And the background color for the sticky header. So, you know, if you want, if you're obviously putting in a different logo for the sticky header and want to have a different uh, background color too, you can do that as well. Okay. And uh, next, we have the menu colors, you know, the main menu link color, uh, link active color, link hover color, then you have the, all the drop down colors, you know, anything as far as the drop downs are concerned. And then you have the off canvas colors, how links and, uh, you know, let's say if I want to put a, you know, I'll just put a background color to the off canvas, you know, just see how that looks. It's going to look very purple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Second. So there you go. You know. Yeah. Obviously, we'll have to change yeah. this, but it it gives you the ability to control a lot of the areas without actually doing a, a, a single without actually writing a single line of code. Yeah. You know. Now back where you were picking all those colors, a lot of them are uh, with that theme are the same. Is there somewhere? Uh, for instance, so you have like active color, active background. They're they're the same. Is there somewhere you can change? all of those at once oh no so we don't have that idea of presets you know in okay. a lot of templates you know even gantry you see the idea of having multiple yeah. different color sets you know a combination we don't have that okay. we just never found that much useful i i know for, for site users when you're demoing things and everything or when you're trying to visualize things it's yeah. easier but the end user is never really going to yeah. use that feature. At I, least I just thought that if you have a logo that's got th or a brand that has three three colors, you might want to uh, replace them all, all of the active ones with a certain color at once. But that's what I was wondering. I agree. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And these are just the colors we have selected. Yeah. You know. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. And you can just yeah. go. With, I mean, once you know what the colors are, you can. I mean, like in Gantry. You change one color and then you copy and paste the hex and then you just go to every oh, you single can one. Here, here too. So yeah. you know you have the R we use the like I said, we use the RGBA yeah. here. You can copy it and you know obviously yeah. Yeah. I think you you can put it here and put it here too. And yeah. you know, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Okay, it's so yeah, good. good yeah. I'm just gonna reload so you know <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, so, asteroids uh, falling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's almost about to hit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the next is the layout manager. Now, this is obviously the most complicated bit, uh, the thing that took a lot of thinking, a lot of time, a lot of resources. And it's simplified into sections. So the, the first level is the section. And I'll just add one at the really bottom here. So when you add a new section, I'll let you finish the chat there. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Mary just said she has to go, but thank you for the demo. And she says this looks very nice. Oh, perfect. Thank you. So uh, when you're about to add a section, 
you can see it asks you what kind of grid layout you need here. You know, and again, this is the bootstrap default grid. You can have a section which is full Y12 grid, or you can have separated 6-6 six, six, or 444 four, four, or 363, three, whatever. And then obviously you add module positions or elements in there. That's and, the idea. And this is just horizontally for one of the one section. One section, yeah. okay. And you build you use multiple sections to build the whole layout. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we added a section here. We didn't select a get, so it, by default it's 12. And then I, in here, I can go and select a module position. Now, in the beginning, when you install Asteroid, you'll all obviously only be limited to module position, by de but by default, we have four of these. Okay, I'll go ahead and clean up the area here. We won't save it, but just so we can actually show uh, what other options are available. So I remove this one. This will make banner available. And this will make the component and other things available. So you can see we have four options here. Okay. Uh, we can do a banner, which is managed by your menu. We can do a component, which is the default component. Uh, this is the messages, which is the Joomla default messages. And the module position is something repeatable you can do over and over, just because you can have unlimited module positions. Okay. The minute you have one, one of, those, of yeah. these three, they'll stop appearing here. Because you don't need uh, messages duplicating. You need yeah. messages twice or component twice or even banner twice. Yeah. I know that's the way it works. I'll go ahead and refresh just so we have our original layout back. There you go. So uh, let me give you, uh, so again, like I said, we can add a section and inside a section, we can add a module position. So we have a module position. So when you add a module position, this is a screen you see. You know, this the element title is really for internal, where you put in a title and you can actually see what the title okay. would be on the back end. This is really just for your internal use. So you can, actually, when you're looking at the layout manager, you can recognize what this particular section or row is displaying. Module position is what position would actually appear here. So if we select top bar two, you can go ahead and publish a module from the module manager to this position and it would appear here. Okay. And obviously you can do custom class and custom ID uh, for CSS. Okay. Yep. In the design settings, you can actually select an animation. So this is something really useful. Our users really liked it. So let me make sure. Oh, yeah. So we'll do it on top bar one. I'll select the animation bounce in left. All right. Perfect. And this is the, you know, the demo of the animation. When you yeah. select it, you know, it kind of demos it. Right oh, okay. There. After the right there. Okay. Yeah. And then you can say animation delay in seconds if you want. We want to use it for a second. And then we say in this one, top bar two, we'll select bounce in right okay perfect and save but keep your eye on the top of the page you'll see this area and this area coming in from the left and the right you know as the page loads <laughs> yeah so you can do to you can do that again it's it's a fancy feature sure. a lot of people don't need it but when you are trying to make things stand out or make things fancy uh, this comes in handy and these are really animate.css animations you know this isn't something we wrote we just use uh, you know same code so that so an just, that animation is head is assigned to a um oh that can be assigned to anything so okay. uh, it can be assigned on a section level as well so you can, uh, so let me show you. So bounce in, uh, I can say bounce in down. So the section would actually come from the top and the columns within would actually come from left and right. So keep an eye on this one, okay? You see, yeah. it was kind of, kind of combination because the section was coming from the top yeah. and the animations were coming from left and All right. right. So you could easily add an animation to any module. Any module, to come in, exactly. To come in anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, come in anywhere from the page. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that that's, makes yeah, that's great for drawing attention to things. Exactly. I'll, I'll show you another demo. You know, if we do it on this one, you know, let's say we just shake it, you know, actually drawing attention. And then, you know, save it. Refresh. So you'll see the menu kind of shakes, yeah. you know. So again, that's really useful on how you want to use it, where you want to use it. Some people just don't like I personally don't like animations at all on our website. But again, if you want to draw attention, that's that's something really useful. Well, even, uh, I mean, uh, there's no limit to the delay. So 
Mm-hmm. You could mm-hmm. give someone 30 seconds and and then right. move something yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 30, 30 seconds, seconds later, you can display it, right? Yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So uh, uh, those are the animations. Now, the animations can obviously be applied on a section level or, uh, you know, a margin position or an element level, as we call it. Okay. And let's go back to the section settings here. So, you know, we added a section and then uh, actually we were in the module setting. So let's go back. Uh, let's go back here. Okay, yeah. so, so we selected the module position, title, custom added classes, and then in the design settings, you know, we have the animation, and we can actually have a custom background here. So, just for uh, let's say, just for this part, if you wanted to have, uh, just for this part, if you wanted to have a custom background color mm-hmm. or a custom background image, you could do that. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll pick red as the color here. Okay. And you can see we have the red background yeah. just for that area. Yeah. Now that's not limited to just colors. I just select a color because it's quicker. You can have a background video there. Oh. You can have a background image there. And obviously all the same uh, areas, all the same properties as a regular background would uh, be valid, you know, because we don't expect it to be this small. I mean, this is a small area, but think of this as a module position, you know, so you can display anything you like here. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then comes the responsive settings. So you can, again, you know, these are default bootstrap breakpoints. You can select if you want to hide something on, uh, you know, desktop, but only have it visible on mobile or, or the other way around. Yeah, that's, uh, I like the way of doing that because uh, otherwise uh, in, some, in some frameworks, you have to remember the actual code, which is uh, phone hidden or desktop or what, whatever. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, here, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember there was this, you know, I think library called mobile detect dot PHP or something that used to have that, you know, so you do uh, a hide phone or hide yeah. desktop or show desktop or yeah. for show yes. desktop or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is again, you know, again, it's for the end users without remembering a simple line of code. Yeah. You can easily hide it on any of the devices and that particular module position or column would stop appearing. Okay. The, the section, section itself, itself would be there, but, but that particular area, area would stop appearing. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, above the element, which is a module position, we have the column because, you know, our row is divided into two columns. The column has same settings just as the element itself. You can do a custom class, custom ID, title is really just for the back end, and then you can do the animations. Uh-huh. Again, this is for the column, you know. So, it... it you know, we're imagining everything to be very nested. So, you know, you have a section with four different columns and each column has two module positions. You want to give out custom colors and backgrounds to everything. You can do that, you know? So basically you could set up so many motions at every different level and going different directions. You're going to give someone a seizure. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the plan. That might happen. Yeah. So the same animations, again, that's why I said, you know, some people find these overwhelming. Some people like, this is too much for me. Why do I have to do all of this? And, you know, we are like, okay, just go and add your modules and that's it. But I think you have to turn it on. You don't have to turn it off. Exactly, exactly. So, but I I think for for the end user, it is very useful, you know, for the regular user who comes in here daily, want to, you know, uh, put on a new module position with a banner, you know, Black Friday offers, whatever, this can be very useful. So same options here, but on on a column level, you have another option, which is not just custom background, but custom colors. So you can actually select the color for the column itself you know so this is different than the column uh, you know the colors we worked on originally which is the site global variables so how the text would look in general within the site but this is an override for that so you can select a color here where you can um, this is the text color that will be for this particular column okay mm-hmm. i you know it's the it's nice to have all those options everywhere because Quite often, one of the frustrating things or the, the challenging things of templates is you look at something and you think, I wish I could. And then it's like, oh, well, how would I code that? Or I don't know how to do right. that. 
or right, maybe right. I'll so that, maybe I'll go find a module that will do that, and then I'll add it. But oh, I like this other module for that, and it's just it's there. Right, right, right. So the idea is to not have the user write any custom code as long as it's feasible, as long as it's possible. Okay. You know. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so, um, so we we covered the you know I mean just like this one we covered the element set things which is the module position in this case we covered the column settings okay with and then here are the section settings so I had this open first but I want to open it later and the best way to demonstrate this one is actually on a banner layout on a secondary page so let me do that let me open up the about page because that way I can demonstrate the you know the banner so this is the banner area okay this is the banner you can select a background image you can put in a title you can select a top subtitle and that's your banner okay and here is the here are the banner settings okay no uh, actually here one second okay so this is the banner section you can select the title you know this is what appears in the back end custom class id layout custom class same thing but here is the important part okay so what's happening here is the background image is actually going edge to edge. You can see, yep. even though the whole template is within the grid, the image is actually going outside of the grid. Okay. Okay. Yep. Now the way that happens is because we, you know, use the bootstrap to do that. So we have selected without container because everything else is living in the container, yep. but this section actually goes without the container. So you can do it for any section. So we have it without container, and then we can say container fluid or whatever, the bootstrap ones, and it would actually, even the text can go left to right. Okay. If you do the proper yeah. settings, yeah. even the text can go left to right. All right. And the way you configure the banner, this is on a menu item level. So let me, I'll just keep this open, open up a new tab. Ah, I'll just move this. We go to main menu and then number one open up about and there are the banner options oh okay, okay. got it right in there yeah yeah so you, it says you must publish the banner element using the layout manager in asteroid for this feature to work you know so on a menu item level you can actually disable enable this so like on the home page we don't have a banner okay yeah uh, we don't have a banner. We don't need one on the home page, but on the about page, we need one and we have it. So on a menu item level, first of all, you could disable enable. And some people just like the image. They don't want the text. So you could do that too. You could disable the title, just have the image there, you know, uh, a nicer image, perhaps a nice in this one. And really that, that just really gets the extent, uh, attention that just okay. really catches the attention. Okay. And if you enable that uh, banner title, then you can put, okay, this is a title. This is a subtitle with Tim. Okay. And then obviously you can change the text color if you like. So we have the, you know, the background is this color. Let's just go with green that stand out. And then we can select, we want this to be a heading or, you know, this would basically is for controlling the size of this. You know, we can say H1 should be at six or paragraph or, you know, a div tag or whatever. And you can see, you know, yeah. this, this gives us what we need. And again, so like I was telling the other, uh, you know, earlier, so we can select if we want this to be a container or container fluid or default or whatever. And then if I put, uh, let's say I am to increase this, you know, I'm going to just increase the banner subtitle here. So you can see this stays within the grid, but the image goes left to right. Again, the, uh, the reason I'm pressing so much on this feature, some, pe uh, some people do find it useful if you want the text to also go left to right. So, Tim, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, yeah just uh, someone said there was an echo, so I'm just going to put my headset on to see if that takes care of it. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's much better. Okay, cool. So, I was saying, uh, you know, the text is within the grid, even though the image is outside the grid, the image is left to right. So if I go here in, and now this is in the layout manager. And if I select, let's say, uh, what do I select here without container? We already have without container here. So this is fine. And I think in the menu, if we select, 
uh, container fluid we had it default so one of these settings would actually get the text out edge to edge as well okay there you go yeah so this is really powerful a lot of people find this really powerful because you're still within the bootstrap grid system the element above this is in the regular grid the element below it is in the regular grid but this is going edge to edge this is doing exactly what is needed to do so now that banner is a menu item though is that what you're saying you know that, that banner is a custom feature but you can manage banners on a menu item level oh, so okay you can have a different image for another menu item oh. and have it without the text and different text going left to right for another menu item. Is it, so is that, a, is that a different way of assigning it to different uh, menu things? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was going to ask uh, eventually, and, um, and if you're getting there, that's fine. Because uh, um, if you have, if you have uh, two categories, dogs and cats, and you want to have a different template for the dogs category, um, do you, are, is this Asteroid make copies of the template or is this how you do it with? Uh, oh, you, you can, so you can, Asteroid is, it, it's just a template. So you can copy the template if you like, but if you have both those categories linked to a menu item, yeah. you can actually control this setting on a menu item okay. level itself. Let me, let me show you this way. So on the about page, we have this, we have this in the background. If I go to the contact page. Okay, so on the contact page, we'll go and change the banner just so you know it clears the air. There's a level, one level. There you go. Okay. And, and this a banner is one of your um, of of those it, four options. Exactly. And it only mm -hmm. exists once. Yep. Okay. So, so you can only add it right. once within a page. So with in this case then so you so you know that on every page you have the banner and because it is if the banner is there you can add text to it if you want based inside the menu that you're working on. Right. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Mhm. Mm so you can see on the contact page I have a different background image and it says don't contact contact us from below. Yeah. And if I go back to the about page, you know, we have a different banner with different settings, okay. different text color and different image. Okay. Mm -hmm. And obviously the banner doesn't have to be at the top of the page. That's where it'd preferably be, be. you know, people would prefer it there. Yeah. But if you let's say if I want to move it down the component, uh, hang on, let me move it here. Okay. Oh, that's interesting because um, because banner is just a section. I mean, remember, it's so, just your, a section so your so your sections the aren't fixed in location then. No, no, no. Even okay. the even the columns and modules are in. Okay, well that yeah, yeah, because that's good because there's uh, for instance uh, in one template system, I've had clients that liked a certain template, but they said mm -hmm. they wanted the header. Um, above the the navigation and right. uh, and the navigation was had its own style but you couldn't mm -hmm. move the navigation section up because that's where navigation was on that template and so it's like oh uh, yeah, yeah what yeah. do i do move the if, and if you move the menu up into the error message area that which is somewhere and it, you lose the form the nice formatting so that's oh that's that's pretty cool to be able to move that Right. And, and again, you know, so now you can see the banner is down at the bottom. The content is appearing before that. But again, that's not limited just to the banner. If you wanted to move the header, which is where a menu would appear, you know, which is what your use case was. Let, yeah. let me show you that, too. Uh, one second. So, OK, so header would still be above the menu, but below the content. All right. OK. And there you go. So you have the, you know. Yeah, again, you made, this you is made a really weird page, but yeah, I see that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I agree. We had a template. The very first premium template we had was of this layout. What where was it? You, yeah, uh, it, let me just show you. So, <laughs> no, it, it didn't look weird when we did oh, it, okay. and I'm sure it wouldn't look weird now either. So while it's loading, uh, you'll see what happens here is we have the video, a video slider at the top of the page. Oh, okay. okay. All right. And then a menu. So you have the video slider at the top of the page, and then you start with the menu. Oh, okay. Sure. So 
this was another one of those things when we were building it and I thought of, okay, what if we wanted to convert this template into, you know, using uh, Asteroid, could we do it? And then it was like, no, because we're making the header fixed. Yeah. So that's why there are so many options to the header because we tried to do, you know, what Gantry was doing and what this template was doing yeah, and, yeah. you know, okay. plenty of the things. Yeah. Yeah, all right, cool. Now I, I yeah. can see that you guys have put a lot of uh, a, a, a thought into it. That's a great approach to want to be able to do everything that anybody else can do all combined, so. Yeah, yeah. It can sometimes become cumbersome as we can, you know, see some of the users who, you know, who are new. Again, it's from users who yeah. are new at yeah. like, you know, people like you and me, they find it very straightforward and simple, but yeah. some of the non-tech savvy users find it complicated that, you know, uh, why are there too many options? And just like you said, they don't have to turn anything off. They just uh, turn anything off. Yeah. They just have to turn it on if they want to use it. You know. Now, out of curiosity, if I don't want a banner on a page, like I don't want that picture, I don't want the banner just on that menu thing. How do you how do you do that in Asteroid? Oh, sure. So on on a menu item, first of all, you can turn it globally if you want. But let's say if I want to turn it for about, but keep it for contact. So I go to about, and in the banner options, I just say enable banner to no. Okay. And then okay. it just doesn't show on that page. Okay. It wouldn't show up on that page. There you go. So that's, uh, let's see that uh, get my head around that because you, you can't, the only, you cannot, ass, you cannot assign or unassign, uh, sections in a lot of template systems. You have to, you have to create a, a version of the template and then not have that or have nothing in it. But in this, mm -hmm. in this case, you can say, I like the whole layout, but I really don't want the banner in this section. So you just turn it off in the menu. So you're actually assigning the section. Mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not going to section and assigning it to a menu. You're going into a menu and turning off the section for that menu. Right, right. And, you know, from what, again, but this is only limited to the banner. You couldn't do it on a section level. So let's say there's a section, you want it on a particular page, but you don't want it on the other page. And obviously the module assignment comes into play. You could do it with that. But the bigger piece is you're able to put classes and IDs on everything. Okay. So let's say there's a section you don't want appearing on a particular page. You can put a class to it and then using the Joomla page class on menu level, you can actually hide it on that page. Oh, okay. You follow me? Uh, probably not, but that's something I don't, I haven't done before, but that's okay. <laughs> that's right. You can't, yeah, you, can't you can't teach me everything today. You just... <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Um, uh, just a sec, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Vinny asked, does Asteroid support font awesome icons? And, uh, I don't think Vinny was probably watching when we already covered that. Uh, it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Font awesome five, uh, font awesome five pro. Does it support pro? Oh, it's, it's a free one. So, oh, you know, okay. we're giving it out. So if someone wants to put the pro one in, they can do what that, I think, you know, as a custom implementation, but the free one is built in by default. So all the icons you see here, you know, the location icon at the top, the phone icon, the email icon, the Facebook, Twitter icons, the menu yeah. arrow icon or the off canvas icon, all of this is Fantasm. And that's all Fantasm 5. Yep. Okay. So um, then he's so and, and did you say that pro can be used or that you just do? How would you? Oh, pro pro would be a custom implementation. We uh, by the core of it, we have free uh, inbuilt. You okay. Know, in, in, yeah. So that's custom you would have to do or the user would have to do? The user would have okay. to do. All right. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Great. Well, let's keep going then. Yeah. So this is the layout manager. Again, you know, the top is the sections and, you know, you have all the options we discussed on the section level. Okay. You can animate, but, you know, decide if you want to display it particularly on a, you know, screen size or whatever. Uh, then you have the column and then you have the actual element. And uh, one of the things I showed you a second ago, you were very excited about, we can move. So you can even move the, mo uh, the you know, the module positions around yeah. so as you can see i'm moving this module around and so that you can only mo move modules inside the section so i can't really take this module and move it up top okay. but i can mo move it anywhere i like inside the section itself and if you set up four columns in a section and then later on down the road you say oh i only want three here can you change oh yeah you click the icon on the right edit grid okay and then you just go back and, and it and it just uh, remembers what's in there. 
Right, right. So let's say we have three columns in this one, left, and then we, you know, we have messages, content, component, and then right. Let's say I only want one, one column here. Okay, you'll, you'll see it puts a, uh, it all in one row. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I, it put yeah. Put all. Of, did it throw? Did it drop what was on the to the left and right of it? Or no, no, no. no. So it just combined. It combined them all. Okay. It combined them all. So on the left and right, we had we had left on the left and right on the right. Okay. We had messages, content top, component, and content bottom in the center. If I go to edit grid and do twelve, which is you know one hundred percent, it puts them all in one row. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I missed that. Just I was reading something in chat there, so I just missed that last. When it all That's combined, right. cool. Uh, okay, so and uh, you know again, and you, we can move things up and up and down. You know, I can drag this one, you know, wherever I like. You know, and uh, that's pretty much it about the layout manager. You know, the okay. more you use it, the more you get used to it. Yeah. Again, it has so many options. So for new users, it might be a little com uh, complicated or cumbersome. But the more you use it, the more you get used to it. Okay. Mm hmm. Uh, again, I'm just going to refresh so we don't uh, no, mess up the layout on this one. <laughs> yeah. and, you're, you're working uh, on the live site for your company, right? <laughs> oh, this is this is no. The, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I wish it was like that. You That'd know, that'd be great, uh, eh? Everyone's going out. What on earth is happening to the site today? <laughs> who's Who's Tim? <laughs> <laughs> well, that'd be good branding for you. Yeah. <laughs> you <know? laughs> uh, the next up is the typography where you manage how you want the typography to be. Uh, one of the options I'll just say myself missing here is custom fonts. At the moment, these are our system fonts that are on, in your operating system or the Google fonts that are available. And yeah. we thought this might be enough, but you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I honestly thought that might be, this might be enough, but a lot of users uh, felt like they need custom fonts. And I, and I can actually see it, you know, for restaurants and stuff, you know, they just want a fancy font, yeah, yeah. which is with Google. So or something uh, that matches something, their branding or something. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You know, some people have that custom font done as well. So you uh, that is something uh, coming up in the near future. You know, it is okay. visible to us. So that'll be available where you can upload a custom font file and you know actually use that. For for the moment that thing is one thing that you'll have to do custom. But uh, back to the typography. This is a body typography. So the you know you can go default where what would happen is this would actually inherit from the CSS, the bootstrap default CSS. Okay. And if you do custom, you select a font and you select a backup font. And great thing about this is, so uh, look at the preview down oh, below, Tim. Yeah. So you'll see the minute I select a, a font, you'll see this would refresh. Nice. Okay, this would change. And if I increase the size, that would work too. Okay, and obviously you can have to size either in pixels, in REM, or you know, let's say you just change it to one, in pixels, in EM, in REM, or you know, PT, like yeah. four different uh, options available. And let's say I just change this to you know, five or something. Yeah. Okay, and then you can change the letter spacing as well. You can change the line height as well. You may not want to do it for body, but for headings and stuff, you know, it's very useful. And then obviously you can play the uh, with the font uh, weight. And then you can select the text transform if that's going to be uppercase, lowercase, or you want to capitalize. Again, uh -huh. for body, it may not be that useful, yeah. but uh, you know when you go to menu and headings and stuff, these options can yeah. be very useful. Does the uh, user system font get uploaded to the website? Oh no! So the the uh, the system no, these are really available in the operating system. Okay. This is a very limited list, and that's why you have a font family and, and then an alternate font family. So let's say you selected something which is only available on Mac but not available on Windows, then the alt font family would take effect. Okay. So you're supposed to configure those that way that if the primary one is not available, then the alternate one would you know kick in and. You know, do which thing. So when you gave the example of uh, uh, fonts that are on your system, you mm -hmm. though you're, you've duplicated them. They're not coming from your system. Those are common ones on a system. On the operating system, like Arial, you know, that's available on uh, every every computer. Yeah, yeah. You know? uh, yeah. But then, as Vinny just said in chat, better just use Google fonts. I mean, there's right. 
So, you know, it says, uh, so if you go in here, it says system fonts, and then you have a few options, and then you have Google fonts. Okay. These are the ones that will be available, uh, loaded from Google fonts CDN. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the other ones are included... In... The other ones are, it's basically picking up uh, from the operating system. They don't need to be included. Okay, what, uh, what, what do you mean they pick up from the operating system? Well, the Arial, for instance, is the default font that is available on your operating system and your browser as well. Okay, but, you're, but you, it's, not, it's not taking it from your computer. It's present in the template. Is that what you're saying? or It's not present in the template. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if you just write like font style, font family Arial, yeah. that's going to show up Arial. I don't know how it does it. Oh, you know, but... oh, because it's on your system and it's displaying it because that's what it says. Okay. There you go. Oh, yeah. yeah. When you said that it picks it up, I was thinking like, oh, is it is it coming from the computer up to that? But it's, it will show. No, no, no. It'll yeah. show according yeah. to what's on, on, on the person's system. Okay. Exactly. I, mm -hmm. got, I gotcha. Um I guess the one advantage of those fonts is because uh, I know some people concerned about the GDPR and having to mm -hmm. give notice that you're using fonts from Google and being downloaded from somewhere. If you're just using system fonts, you don't have to worry about that in your privacy policy. Exactly. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the font family. And, you know, like I said, if you do default, it would inherit it from the bootstrap css files if you do custom then obviously it's the custom one and then uh you know you have the menu sub menu h1 through h6 uh font typography oh, yeah. right here yeah so the good thing about this is you can do inherit for all of these and it would inherit from the body it would in if you select inherit it would just inherit from the body oh, okay. typography all everything right. else and right. if you do default on this one, it would actually inherit everything from the, uh, you know, the CSS file itself. So okay. if you are, you know, if you prefer to write, even sometimes I do as well, if you still prefer to write in the CS file, uh, CSS file, you're, you know, kind of old school, yeah. you can do that and, you know, really turn these off. Okay. Yeah. And Vinny points out that uh, about the uh, system fonts that if he has Arial and I don't, then I won't see it in Arial. So that yeah, is, yeah. that is correct. Yeah. That is correct. Yeah. All right. Well, that well, that's that's pretty cool. So you could have the whole you could have one font everywhere, a set in body, but then you could use a, a different one for heading three. And um, yeah. And again, and you're many, not many, you're, you're many not many. you're not even you're not using um, element inspector to find out what it is and where it is and change the name and this and that and then put in the custom CSS. You've gone and said, oh, I want this font that in that size. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. Nice. Sure. I'll go ahead and ah, refresh. I don't want to save these settings. Okay. So that's the typography. Next up is article blog. So what this does is basically this kind of combines uh, what K2 offers, some of it at least. Okay. And then I take the article manager to, you know, article manager 2.0, if I may. And okay. it just adds a little bit of features in there. Let me see if I have, okay, so if I do blog. Okay. So uh, you can see, you know, the, the features of the blog are, it allows you to put a gallery in. It allows you to put a read time in. You know, this is something I, re I, I really like myself as well on Medium, you know, I see it. It allows you to uh, put custom tags. You know, you can say bestseller or hot article or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. It allows you to put a YouTube video in there, a Vimeo video in there, a Spotify music or a SoundCloud one, okay? And, or, or it allows you to create a review as well. So let's go back to the article manager and I'll show how this works really. So, so we'll open this one, you know, this is a gallery type. All right, and there are the, so here are the blog oh. options, you know, which are just turning <laughs> it on and off, and here are the article type options. So you can select the kind of article we need here. So regular article, no options, okay, just the bad. 
video, just drop in the Vimeo or YouTube URL uh-huh. and you're done. Gallery, uh, and let me just show you how the gallery is gonna look like here. So, you know, we have three images here. You know, we have the carousel and you can see, you know, the images keep rotating. This is a gallery type article, okay? Yeah. So in gallery, you select the width, you know, if not, it's 100%. You select the bullets, navigation arrows, if it's gonna show, and you can see that there's an arrow here, but because of the background color, we actually don't see it. Yeah, okay. But there are yeah. arrows coming up on the right and left, and then there's a navigation for the carousel at the bottom. Okay, so we can select, and again, this is on an article type level. So you could have a gallery with images and navigation on, but you could have another gallery without uh, navigation. Okay, and so the next thing you do is you can put images in there and put a title and description, which you know appears somewhere here. Okay, for each image, and that's it. You can add as many as you like, and 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 uh, do it that way. So this is so you're still your articles and your content still in the core, but you've added this tab that interacts with the template to give. You basically have um, article mi- mi- mini templates, or I guess there would be layouts then, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And is, so is that uh, is that doing the is that accomplishing the same thing as custom layouts in Joomla or something like? Oh no! So this this is done using overrides. So yeah, when okay. you know. Uh, the article is you know, rendered on the front and we're hijacking, we're kind of hijacking that layout okay. and just adding these options if they're selected on this so article. So it's article override. Right. And now you, but now there, you can do that by going in and adjusting PHP in Joomla and do a similar thing, right? Right. Okay. Right. That's what we do. So basically, uh, so let's say this, this is an article layout. Mm-hmm. If I wanted to change how this is appearing and if i wanted to you know hide it i mean you can hide it and move it around yeah. using the Joomla back in itself but if i really just wanted to have something else here another format just the ear you know i'd have to take up the layout and put it in my template and the reason we override it we don't modify the core files is so when we upgrade our Joomla or upgrade our Joomla installation yeah. the core files are overwritten and our modifications will be gone yeah. with it so this is real, but uh, I just want to make sure. Uh, uh, I just want to try to uh, understand sure. that those were the the same things. So this is another non-coding example of how to have uh, overrides for your articles. Right. So the overrides are built in, but this lets you, you know, yeah. have a gallery, okay. a YouTube video, real formatted. So you know, a good number of times. Let's say if you're writing a uh, an article or a blog post, and you know the video is going to be the primary feature of it. You know, even on your website, I saw yeah. yesterday, you know, you have thumbnails and you have video pretty much at the top of the page. Well, totally. You know, yeah. And they, I was, yeah, exactly. So this can come in very handy in those cases. You know, you do a video type and the video comes up right at the page. You know, you don't have to go and adjust your editor settings to allow iframes and stuff. You don't have to get a plugin to put in the YouTube ID. All you do is copy the YouTube URL and that's it. And you know what? We'll we'll just do a YouTube video real quick. Hang on. Let me open up. Yeah. Uh, uh, while you're YouTube. doing that, are you able to change? So you have the YouTube one, and it has the video at the top. Are you able to change uh, the layout of it so that your your video pages have something else at the top, and then the video? Or are these pretty uh, hard so hard set? The- yeah, it is. So the feature, the article type, yeah. whether that be video, gallery, audio, review, or quote, this is going to be always appearing at the top. Okay. And All then right. follows the regular article. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So here's your channel. Let's say uh, if we just take. So let's say if oh, we just no. take this video. <laughs> uh, My bad Juma trailer. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we'll go another one, another one. Okay, uh, so we go with this video, okay? And let's say I change this to video, I select YouTube and just put in the video. Yeah. And I refresh the screen. And I go here, this is a gallery type. You can see the video at the very top and then follows the rest of the article. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that comes in real handy when you want to, you know, uh, do articles specific, uh, content specific articles, basically. 
anything apart from just content. So you want to do a video, you want to do a gallery, which we already do, uh, you know, saw. You want to do a SoundCloud audio, you know, you want to do a review and quote. I'll show you these two. But uh, another feature I want to show is, let's go back to the blog. So this is the notification, you know, this is the badge that automatically shows up that tells that is a YouTube video. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. So this is for SoundCloud, you know, okay. this is for a quote. Okay. And this is for a review. And then, you know, I think uh, the, the one, the gallery one is, uh, you know, some, something along the lines. Right. Uh, let's just select gallery and, you know, we'll see that too. There you go. That's a gallery one too, you know, images on top of each other. Okay. And then you can have the article badge, which is another option. So you can have, you know, let's say a video is editor's choice or whatever. You can select that and that would appear here. So it says editor's choice here. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And then you can do bestseller, hot, trending, anything. They're hard coded, you know, with colors yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But if you want to have a custom one, you can do that too. So I say custom and I say, Oh my Tim's hot. <laughs> Tim's hot. Really? I, I heard that so many times in high school. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Tim's hot video. Yeah. yeah. That's oh, nice video. Yes. Say. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it, the ending is different this time. And, yeah. And what you're, uh, so that's just the blog view there, right? The blog layout. That, uh, that, that is the blog category layout, right? Okay, it's blog, not the okay. individual. So it's a, in Joomla, it's a category layout. So in the menu oh. item 11, you're just selecting the menu, cat, menu category blog layout, basically. Okay. I really like mm -hmm. this. This is, yeah. And then you can change the color of this too. You know, yeah. you want to have, uh, you know, red color. Yeah. You can have that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and then, you know, again, these are the article types. So you can decide if you don't want the article badge or if you want one of these or a custom one. And then as far as the, this is concerned, we did the video, we did the gallery. On the audio one, you just put in the SoundCloud embed code. Basically, you're uh -huh. just putting in iframe code or whatever comes yeah. from SoundCloud here. Uh, the review one is uh, pretty good. Let me just open up a review article. So let's say you're trying to review a product. You know, you want to put ratings and stuff. You can do that. Alrighty. Let me open up uh, the back end for this article just so we don't actually have to fill all of this in. Where is the review? Review, review. So iPhone. This reads, yeah, iPhone X review. Yep. I see. Fourth one. Yep. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> so. It says review headings, summary, what's good, what's bad, overall rating. And then, you know, if you are an affiliate, you know, possibly want to link to Amazon or whatever, you know, people want to buy it, you can do it here. So the way all of that shows is uh, this is a total score, the rating is selected, this is the heading, this is a summary, and then these are the pros, these are the cons, and then you say get it now. Yeah. Okay. And anything you don't fill it basically just doesn't appear. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you can, uh, you can, can you add, you can add lines to that obviously then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, yeah. you know, this is one part oh, of okay. line. So You've got, okay, I see up there. This is good. And I'll just add one. This is bad. Okay, so you see the bullets appear automatically, yeah. one per line, and this is good, this is bad. And the way this works is, so at the bottom of the review, you add these review criteria. You know, you say design, it's nine under 10 stars, you know, text, it's, you know, six stars mm -hmm. or whatever, and text and, and, and all of that. So you, you can put in that and it'll appear here. And, you know, when you pay, load the page, it actually animates from left to right, but, you know, it's really nice to me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that's the review type. And the last one is the quote one. Let me show you that too real quick. Quote one. This is the quote, yeah. So you just basically write a fancy quote and, you know, quotes appear uh, and, you know, the author and it just displays it like this one. Okay. And then the regular article follows. Nice. In the back end, yeah, this is a quote type article. Nice Chuck Swindoll quote there. 
yeah so you know you say quote text quote author and that's it you know cool yeah okay perfect and that's just now a, and that just appears at the top of the article the rest of the content you've put in there right right so this is the rest of the article and this is the quote or the gallery okay. or the video or the audio or whatever you select All right and this um so and this is part of uh, every uh, Joom dev template this yep art okay mm -hmm. good okay perfect so let's close this this is actually part of asteroid our, our a few of our old templates are still not available on asteroid oh okay so, yeah. well yeah yeah, so, yeah yeah i meant okay asteroid i didn't realize that you had other ones that weren't okay we did we did yeah asteroid is only like what five months old yet you don't you know? like to talk about those anymore <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I told you the ones I like. I yeah, still like them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, so then you have the blog options. You know, you know, if you so if you go down to the blog, you can see there's this author profile. This is something you get in K two. You know, oh, okay. where you have you can put a picture of yourself, yeah. and then you know, you can put your name, description. So you select if you want to have an author profile or not, and uh, so you can turn all of this on an article level. You obviously have these settings on this uh, blog level as well yeah. on asteroid so you can say if you want to turn off the author info or article badge or read time by the core of it but individually on specific articles if you want to turn it but only want to keep it on other articles you can do that too where is it pulling that uh author info from good question that was going to be the next thing oh I okay you. <laughs> that's in the user manager you had yeah. you had me at author info <laughs> <laughs> So if, in the user uh, manager, uh, I was just going to say, if you're going to take me to their profile and there's a place for them to put it, that's, that's good. Yeah. And then you can add your social profiles in here. So these are all the font awesome icons. Oh my goodness. You select whatever icon you want. You put in a link and that's your link that are going to appear here. So who so thought of, who thought of this? Uh, one, uh, not me, one of, one of our guys, you know, we, we, we have very, you know, the guy who is the lead developer and the designer on yeah. this, you know, who pretty much did 90% of the heavy lifting has been working with me for Joomla for almost like 2012. So yeah. he has experience for like six years, you know, there used to be a, either a module or a component that would do that with the, uh, it would, but it would, it was separate. It wasn't like, I mean, this obviously isn't core because if you get rid of asteroid, then you're going to lose that. But, right. uh, but it was not right there inside the profile. So I'm assuming here then, so if I log in the front end into my profile, um, mm -hmm. uh, in the front end, I have a tab there to put in my information and select these icons. Yeah. Okay. Front end and back end. Yeah. Um, uh, Vinny's asking, is this using the custom fields? Uh, this area? Yeah. No, this is, this, we are, we are overriding this. Okay. So that's, that's, that's something that's. That's... If we did this with custom fields, we would have to either run a SQL or have every user create those custom fields on the installation of Asteroid. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is uh, so this information is in a in a table somewhere that belongs to Asteroid. Oh, oh, oh no no no. So good thing about Joomla is, uh, so first we saw the menu extending. Okay, yeah. we saw the banner options and everything. Yeah. Second, we saw the article options extending and third is the author. So there is no database table that is saving all this information. This is all saved in the params column, the parameters column oh. of this user table or the article table or the menu item table. Okay, even the social profile stuff. Everything, oh. it's all JSON, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't even know what JSON is, except when I oh. have, to, uh, except when it breaks and I have to try to figure out the, to fix it, <laughs> and then I do tutorial on it, and then people say thanks for the help, and that's the mystery of my channel. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Yeah, J JSON in a nutshell is really just a way to uh, save data without creating too many columns. So let's oh, okay. say. You know, you want to save save your. Let's just not get sidetracked, but really, you know, in thirty seconds, if I was to explain that, if you want to save your name, address, email, phone number, everything, and you don't know if that data is going to extend, so you know, you can't be creating more columns in that table. You know, okay. you save that in JSON, and then you know, that's that's pretty much it. Yeah. And that's what's causing JSON errors when a character gets out of whack. 
something like that yeah, yeah okay. because because it is in all one column you know you have to uh, format it in a particular way to make sure the quotes not don't get in the way and yeah. everything and unformat it when it comes back okay you know well basically yeah. in each one of my live streams there's something basic that's unrelated to the topic that i end up learning so that will be that for today <laughs> <laughs> sure sure so uh those are the blog options and again you know you have the author information and the custom one is read time like i told you i really like this feature on medium this is counted based on the number of words you have in the article okay and you know we divide that by 170 words uh 170 words per minute which is that average reading speed for someone yeah yeah uh, just so, back to the author info can you put their picture on there yeah 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 oh i close that hang on so you can put your picture on there i mean i'll put a uh, picture on there uh we, we are editing the other author mark smith so I'll put a picture on there. There you go. Uh, you're not permitted. Why am I not permitted? There you go. Okay. So if I go to profile and I say upload. Oh, okay. Right. I saw the Gravatar thing. I just didn't see the upload. So. Yeah, Gravatar uploads by default. Yeah. 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 Uh, so sample image. And there's this dude. And refresh. And there you go. Oh, There's wow. your picture. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's the author thing. Okay. Now we're back here. We can select if we want the, you know, read time and social share and comments and article type options and read time and related articles and author info. And I explain all of these one by one. So we have the read time and uh, author info displaying. Okay, so this is the read time and this is the author info. I'll go ahead and disable both of these. Author info, read time disabled. Article type icons. So this is the icon that we see in the blog layout. Okay. We'll disable that too. And then we'll enable these three and configure these options how they work. Now, if I go back here and refresh, so we'll see that we neither see the comments nor the social share now nor the related articles mm -hmm. the reason is we have we haven't configured those yet so we go back to the asteroid and this is where we configure the social icons okay we select either we want uh, this to be add this or share this and there's a particular code you get from them which you once you put it up here then they'll start appearing either at the bottom of the article or to the left of the page or in a pop-up or however you configure it and add this or share this platforms. Okay. Okay. And then you have the comments. You can either have Facebook comments, you can have discus comments, hyper comments, intense debate, anything. We'll just, I know the username, I think for discus, if I use Joomla, the comments start showing up, but obviously put in your username when you're configuring this. Yeah. yeah so, uh, Let's just look at that real quick. So there you go. The comment section would start appearing. Huh. And yeah, yeah. You know, piece of cake, right? Uh, the Facebook ones, you have to put your API stuff in, I guess. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you just create an app and put the uh, API ID. And then for hyper comments, there's a widget ID. For intense debate, there's, a, uh, I think, a username. But then, then you can, you know, disable these two. Okay. Yeah, so In, that's intense, that's, intense yeah. debate and Facebook are the same thing, aren't they? <laughs> I no. are they? No, no, it's just the way that people no. behave on Facebook. It's okay. usually intense debate, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's with the space, you know. We have intense debate without a space. The way people react on Facebook. That's what I'm is saying. Yeah, intense debate with a space in there, you know. Comments. Yeah, with, yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, so, uh, you know, and then, you know, you can, you can display all of this, you can change these options, you know, so if you don't want to have all these article badges and everything, you can turn them yeah. off. You can turn off everything on a global level. So it wouldn't mess up, you know, it would none of this would show up, okay. you know, you can turn these off. And the last thing you have is the open graph settings. Mm -hmm. So you can put a title and an open graph description and an image. And this is what the Facebook bot or Google would, all these bots would yeah. pick up when they come to crawl your website. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, article type options. Let's go back to here. Yeah, the social. Uh, yeah. Okay. So there are the social icons, the social options are really really good actually 
yeah, I, I, I really like them. Um, so here's how they work. Obviously, like I've explained before, any feature you have to assign that feature to a module position. So we did that to top bar two, and obviously this exists in our layout manager. And then you know you select the slide uh, style. So right now you can see all these icons are white mm -hmm. because our link color is white. Okay. If I say brand color, you'll see all of these would change to the color of the brand itself. Oh, that didn't work. Hang on. Save again. Hang on. I think I have to clear cache or something. Yeah. Yeah, now it should work. It's taken a long time to load. Yeah. Didn't work. Okay. Unless so your brand is white. Uh, yeah, no. So the brand color is actually uh, the Facebook. Oh, brand color. I so see. Okay. You can see All right. the blue here, the light blue here, the LinkedIn blue. Okay. You know, three different okay. blues. Yeah. So this would appear. I don't know why it's not working. Maybe it's a setting thing on, uh, you know, my end. But uh, this works where you can see okay. the icons in different colors like you see here. So uh, you can move icons around. Okay. You just hold it and move it around. And you can add more icons. So I want to add Behance, Dribble, Flickr, you know, Google Plus, wow. LinkedIn, we have it, Messenger. So Facebook, you know, we have two icons. We can select from those. You know, GitHub, we have three. We can select from those. Twitter, we have two. And these are, again, font awesome icons, you know, like the user is asking, you know, Winnie, yeah. I think his name. So these are all font awesome icons. So if I go and refresh here, you will see a lot of icons appear. Okay. okay. Now, Good thing about this is these are all social icons, you know, these are all the social icons mm -hmm. that are available in the, that are available in the font awesome. Okay. Sometimes you may want to add a custom icon. So we have the add custom profile here. So you put in the icon class, whatever it is, let's just go to font awesome and get one real quick. One second, and for a desktop, I don't even know the name of the icons. Uh, yeah, so let's say we want to do the accessibility icon. Mm. Okay, there you go. So the name for this one is accessibility, accessible icon. Now, if I put in uh, put it in here, that should appear. On. Maybe we have to put this one. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So we just have to put this code in okay. here, and you can see the custom icon would appear here. Okay. And then you can select the icon color. So you want this one. Since this is not a brand icon, so we don't have the color for this, we don't know the color for the brand, then you can put a custom color for this All one. All right. Yeah, so if I save this. So again, small features, you know, social icons is, is no one's going to pay that much attention to yeah. this, but small features yet useful. Uh, for some reason, the colors are not working on all of these. So something is overriding. Let me just... Uh, something had to not work. Yeah, right? <laughs> so there you go. There you go. Now, if I remove that white color, yeah. you can see all the brand mm -hmm. uh, icons, they, all the colors are coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, all right. So next up, we have custom code. You know, you have your Google Analytics code, whatever. You can put those here. You can, uh, and you know, you can put them. You know, sometimes you get specific instructions. You know, so if you're doing A/B testing with Google AdWords, there's a code you want to put at the very top. So this would be the right place to do that. Okay. And then, you know, if you want to move JavaScript or put stuff at the bottom, you can do it here. You want to do custom CSS, you can do that here. And then you can obviously have custom JS here. If you have, uh, you know, direct URLs to stuff, you know, uh, CSS files or JS files, you want to add them, you just type them one per line oh, okay. here and they would be added. Okay. I like that uh, custom CSS files for putting the, the URL of it. Yeah, yeah. So you just put in the URL. So either you put the relative path yeah. or you put the full path if it's something external as well, you know, outside your domain, and that would work uh, just as fine as well. Okay. Yep. Uh, next, 
next up is the miscellaneous options. So if I go to the very bottom, you can see, you know, we read this footer, a copyright, blah, 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 powered by Asteroid Framework, free Joomla templates by Joomdev. This is coming from here, you know, well, this is in the PHP file, but the rest of it is coming from here. So you can basically have copyright, uh, the current year, this will be replaced by the current year. So you don't have to change that every year uh, if you're doing it with a custom module. And then site name would be replaced with the site name of your Joomla website. Okay. And then you can type in whatever HTML you want here. You can select what position you want to load this to. And again, this is a position which has to exist in the layout manager. Yeah. And it, it would show. So that's one thing here. The second thing is a contact information, which have we have been seeing it all this time at the top of the page. So you can do, uh, you know, you basically select a position where you want the contact to appear, you know, again. And after that, you put in an address, a phone number, mobile number, email address, whatever you put in will appear. Whatever you put in will uh, just go away. So the icons for that won't appear either. And right now you can see I have icons appearing here. And if you want to do text for these, you can do that too. So it read like location or, you know, uh, actually address and phone oh, okay. and email and all that stuff. You can see it reads address, phone, and email, huh. you know, instead of these things. And then you have the development mode. Let's say you want to turn off the whole site and just, you know, just put in, uh, uh, put in something random. So let's do that real quick. Uh, basically, this is a nicer override for the show offline feature, if I may, you know, because we obviously have this in default by Joomla, yeah. but it doesn't allow all these options. So let's say I'm going to say our site is offline and we'll be coming back up. Okay, so development mode is like offline mode. Yeah, oh, okay. just just copy of the offline, you know, we have in global configuration, but with much uh, better options, if okay. I may. So, 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 so does that mean your site is online, but you're showing an offline page and nothing else will work? Yes. Okay. So no users can log in, nothing. Okay. And good thing about this is this, again, it's a really nice page. And then you can do your social icons, the same social icons we configured. Okay. Yep. In the last options, you can have the same one there. Huh. And sometimes, you know, you want to have a countdown timer as far as when the site is going to come back up. And then you can display that too. Okay. And you have the yeah. counter so, on there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you select a date. Right now, you can't select a time. You okay. can only select a date. And then you select a date, and then that okay. uh, you know allows you to do what you want. Yeah. So if you were going to be down for thirty minutes for updates, then you wouldn't. Or whatever. Yeah, you're running the updates in the back end. Yeah. You know that's a perfect use case. You know, you because you're doing updates in the back end, you can do something like that. Run your updates. No page will be accessible. And once you're done, you can turn this yeah. off. And you know. I was just thinking up. though, with the counter, you you don't you can't put thirty minutes or I mean you could just put the, oh, yeah, you could yeah, put yeah. the text no. yeah. We, we need to improve this to a certain extent we need to. This isn't uh, working the way it should be because, I mean, right now it's just doing a time, but I can't control it. So it, it's to a certain date yeah. and it's just kind of getting 24 hours or something, I think. Okay. And you can do, uh, you know, you can do a background image for this one as well. So again, same background image that are available everywhere. And uh, so after this one, the last two options that are left is the 404 page. So, you know, let's say I select Oh, Tim, you know, this yeah. menu item doesn't exist. And right now I just see 404 looks like something went wrong, you know, and then I can control this here. Yeah. Okay. And go to Tim and then I can say, looks like something went right. Just change it real quick just so I can show you. Mm -hmm. yep. And there you go. Yeah. It looks like something went right. Go to Tim. <laughs> Not not always a combination of things that are said. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't thought it would come out this way, <laughs> but I, I you know, just trying to demo it. But yeah, and the last feature is the fav icon. You know, uh, you know, we have found it a, a good number of frameworks. You know, uh, don't don't offer you to allow you to change that fav icon. The, the, you can do it in this one. It's a pain. So. Yeah, well, it's a pain to find where to do it. So. Right. So you can just select a PNG. It doesn't have to be an icon file either. You can just select a PNG and it would do it, you know. Uh, so let's say we want this to be our fav icon. Okay. And save and refresh. And there you go. You see in the bottom left, oh, yeah. top left. Now, is that uh, is that just a resized image that's loading up there, or is? Oh it... no! It's just gonna it's just gonna re re load this image exactly as is. 
Okay. It's not going to resize it. It's not going to do anything. So, yeah. but so it's that full size jammed in up there. So you could. Yep. You could. Yep. You could yep. have a. So you, you got to take care of the resizer. Yeah. The yeah resizing yeah, yeah, as a yeah. user. Well, you would hope so. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, and the last option is export and import with so many options it can be uh, with so many options it can be you know hard for users to move things around let's say you know you configured all these options you don't want to move the whole uh, you know site around using a key and whatnot but you really just want to pick up the JSON for this one so you can export it and import it into your next site and that's it. So if you really, yeah, so you can use this in a different site and then change just a couple of things, colors or that. Exactly, right, 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 yep. Which, uh, are all the colors and everything stored in the database? And no, so everything is stored in a physical file, a JSON a file. A JSON file, so you could always yeah. just uh, do a, open that and do a find and replace on your colors as well. Oh, yeah, 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 you and can do that import, too. Yeah. Yeah, and then you know you export it, and you know, and then open it with Notepad and whatever. Yeah. Okay. And Notepad uh, plus and plus. Check out the video. Notepad plus plus. That's what I have. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you open that up, and uh, that's it. That's it, right? You you know you have yeah. everything. So if we look uh, go look up the colors, uh, this is the layout actually. Uh, background repeat. No, hang on. So are you, like, like you said, are you on a separate ticket. screen? Oh, you're not seeing it. No. I uh, uh, yeah. It's actually only sharing the browser. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, that's so, fine. That's fine. Yeah. E, maybe I can. You know, yeah, yeah. I you know. exported yeah. the file and then opened it. Right, right. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you can change and then import it back up however you like it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's the end of it. Yeah. Great. That, well, thanks for that. Listen, I'm going to uh, put uh, the Zoom link in here for anyone that wants to ask a question um, okay if you have a little bit more time sure Vinny had a question but i'll let him ask it he will probably well he would probably come on we'll see let's see uh, there's the uh the zoom link in chat uh i'll ask Vinny's question while he's uh, firing that up uh are do you have instructions for putting the uh, font awesome pro on is there is there directions uh, on how to how to do it to work with your framework? This is question. Uh, we don't have instructions, but y you know that's something really simple. And you know if he goes ahead and post it to our forum, uh, someone can really answer that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty. Uh, I man, there's a there's a bunch of things in there that uh, I really really liked when I saw them. Oh, thank you. Sure. Yeah, Vinny says, oh, what question did he have? He says, oh, that question. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I like, too, the, how it's uh, really has cut down, like, as far, I mean, you have the place for custom code, but mm -hmm. as far as going and customizing a color that, um, or, or, or customizing something, you're just going and checking, because I think that, uh, I mean, one of the strengths of Joomla is, uh, there's lots of everyday users that want to go on and just be able to find things and switch them. And, uh, and you know, it's important to be able to do coding or, or to at least look at code and see what's happening. But not everybody's going to get there. And, uh, right. and, and so that's, you know, if you make it the, the, the less barrier you have for people, the, the nicer sites are going to have, the more they're going to enjoy it. And uh, maybe they're going to get involved in developing and making sites and then um and then they'll learn the other stuff when they want to do things so i agree sure totally Vinny yeah. says he has a personal project that he's working on and he thinks he'll try asteroid for it so oh please and you know uh, come come to our forum it's on joomdev.com slash forum and post any questions you have we are around 24 7 to help users just like you make the best out of it cool uh, now i'm gonna go just bring up the joom dev site here mm-hmm um maybe i should do that uh maybe i should do that i'll share i'll share that screen let's see i'm gonna share all my screens on here which one have i got here i think this is the uh not that there it is, this oh, is you're one. already sharing everything no so i know i, I got yeah you yeah. can see my screen but i thought that uh 
just to do it. To, I need I need practice with Zoom. So I think everybody can see this. If I remember right, no, you're still looking at no. That, I'm just trying to figure out how this works. Eh? Now I can see. It. Now I can see. It. Yeah. Uh, I would. I no. I wanted to share it so you could see it because you're not watching on uh, on Twitch. Yeah. No, I have Twitch open on the side. Okay. So you got uh, there's uh, maybe the hopefully the delay's not too long there. Uh, Vinny says right. you can see it. So uh, you've got your Cyber Monday sale left for. Oh, look at that. Well, hey, we can watch. You'll get one day, 11 hours, 11 minutes, 11 seconds. There's a screenshot for you to grab. Um, <laughs> and so yeah. you guys have over 25. I think I looked. You had 27 templates. Right. And then um, 25 plus free and premium templates. And uh, let's just go right to those. And check that out. And you've got the, you actually have some themes there too. So that's uh, the one I checked out, I think was for construction. And I thought, oh yeah, those are good colors to start out yeah, with. Yeah, for yeah, yeah, JD so, Construct or something. So yeah, 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 a good number of templates. And you know, the, the you know, if you become part of the club, the good thing is we release a new template every month and a yeah. free one every three, four months. So, you know, you're always up for new things, you know? Yeah uh yeah so it's gonna um, be on page two the construct one you're looking at i think it's gonna be on page two page two here we go yeah that one here and uh so you've got your details on it you've got a demo uh so there, there you go uh, Vinny asks is joom dev built using asteroid is this an asteroid yes. it yes. is yes. oh yes. that's yes. good yes. That's the way to prove it, right? That could have been embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if we go to the live demo here, so, and uh, you've got the half price thing on there, it looks like. So, mm -hmm. yeah, this is, um, well, this is interesting. This guy's moving a little bit. Right, so that's, that's smart slider, you know, really good. Oh, okay. But, like, he, like, as I move my mouse around, he kind of moves a bit. Right, he moves, right. Wow. Yeah, that's like that, that's like those 3D photos that uh, people are posting from their new iPhones now. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. You can do this easily with Smart Slider. You know, nothing we built. You know, we just use the image and concept. Uh, concept, but you can use, build this using what Smart Slider. What is Smart Slider? Is it a script? Is it a module? No, it's it's, it's a component and module and plugin and combination oh, okay. of things. But it's an extension for Joomla and WordPress and I think uh, other uh, CMSs yeah. as well. It's a very popular extension. Though. Yeah, I've seen. It. Look, I get distracted by shiny things. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks very much. Sure that's uh i think that's i think i've asked all the questions that were there and that i noted and that one that i asked about the assigning different templates now i just have to stop sharing hey i'm back all right well chayton thanks very much for your time that was uh what are we at here an hour and 48 minutes you really burned through that that was great uh, December 1st, we'll start a new giveaway, and that's going to be the three-month membership is what Joom Dev's going to give. Three-month membership every month, one of those giving it away, and that's going to be exciting. And I think uh, I talked to uh, uh, Naveen about some uh, uh, a couple of other things that he mentioned. So that is excellent. Um, if you've watched to the end, and you know there's a good chance you did watch to the end of this one because sometimes we end up uh, lost off in the woods at, at, at chat with different things. But this was really good content all the way through. So if, you, uh, uh, if you're watching this on the YouTube Encore Performance, uh, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, leave a comment, like, do all kinds of stuff. It helps other people to find uh, the content and, and what they're looking for. And if you have any ideas, uh, for other Watch Me Work live streams, let me know. Next week uh, is going to be John Molholt from Denmark, who's got a new extension he's working on to uh, uh, with uh, uses fields and uh, is combined with open graph tags uh, and uh, custom fields with open graph tags, and it's called oh, Hoda Meta. Hoda Meta. So he's going to be next Tuesday here at UTC uh, here on the Twitch at uh, UTC eighteen hundred. So. Um, uh, Chayden, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me. And uh, sure. stick, stick around after I end the stream here because we'll still be talking on Zoom. But um, anyways, for the rest of you, thank you. For